Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. The double sound effect, huh? You got that right. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is the NFL Gambling Picks for week number 14. Last week, I went 3-3, three and three, lost $95.45. Chris went 1-4. and four. How was that Mount 500? I was Ooh. just dancing on that You were line, so close. And then I just fell off. Lost $309.09. Is that good? It put you in the negative for the season. It's not good. It's not good. Uh, on the season, I am 30-38. and 38. I am down 16.23 units. Chris is 30-33. and 33. And he is down 3.10 units, so not great, but still right there. You got a chance. We got several weeks left in the NFL, man. We're doing all right. That's right. We're looking good. Ryan Spann did really well last week. He went 6-4 and four in our Pick'em Contest. You can enter it yourself over at winningcureseverything.com. Uh, over there, you can also find our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you comment in. Tell us what your picks are for the week. We would love to see them. We'd love to get your opinions on these. Tell us what we got right, what we got wrong, et cetera. We, uh, we appreciate all of you guys supporting what we're doing over here. We have a good time with this. It's yes, always sir. fun. Always fun. Uh, but, yeah, enter the Pick'em Contest. It's right on the website. Go to Football Picks Contest. We do it every week. Uh, you win a, a cool prize from our main sponsor, Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on the sports books, on the steakhouses, on the golf courses, on the concerts, on everything about Tunica over at tunicatravel.com. Go check it out for yourself. And we got a new sponsor, Smack Apparel. Smackapparel.com, S M A C K apparel.com. Use promo code WIN and you get 20% off your order. Anything over $40 ships for free. I'm telling you, so you could order like six shirts. It's going to ship for free, and you'll get 20% off the whole thing. So go over to smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN. They got cool stuff over there. How many picks you got this week? Four. I got five. So if I go 100%. Yeah, you go 4-0, oh, you'll be back above 500. Back above 500. There you go. By one game. By one game. I will not be able to get there this week, but I'm only eight down. I, I could feasibly do well enough to get back to 500 by the end of the season. I mean, we're only in week 14. We got 17 weeks here, and then we got the playoffs. We'll see what happens. I know. I know it's only Tuesday, and these lines are gonna. The amount of money and the amount of like where the public is going is gonna change. I'm on the two biggest public games, and they were not the two that I thought they were going to be. <laughs> what, 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 uh, I'm guessing 49ers, and yes. what's the other one? The other one is the Colts. Really? I, I'm i not – I can't believe that the Colts are the – they're the biggest public favorite on Tuesday, 94% of the bets. Holy mackerel. In Vegas. Now, this is not offshore, but in Vegas, 94% and of the bets are on the Colts. And the line's going the opposite direction. The line's going the other way. Ooh. That doesn't. This happens in college all the time, and a lot of times in college, it just doesn't matter. Yeah, that's because the talent gap is so different. That shocks the hell. I was not expecting that to be a public play. I could, I could believe it. I could believe it. My one of my picks, I was fully expecting to be a public play, and it's, it's just not. So. Well, let's uh, we'll talk about it when we well, get there. Yeah, we'll talk about. We get, I, I got five picks. You got four. Let me go in and, and give shit. out my first one. Go ahead. My first pick here. The Lions are going to Minnesota. And the Vikings are favored by 13. Is it still 13? It is. Okay. Look. What is that, 73% on, on Detroit? Everybody's on Detroit. I'm going the Vikings here. Yeah, I thought so. They, they lost the Monday night game. But do you know what they have done after every other loss this season? Blowed somebody out. They came back the next week, not only blew them out, but also covered. They've covered after every loss. It doesn't matter what the spread is. They they blew out two of them. Uh, one of the other ones was they won at the Cowboys. Okay. So, yeah, they, they covered that one as well. They're coming off a loss at Seattle. They get to go home in the Dome. 
The Lions hadn't been looking real good lately. Man, they had that game at, at Seattle, too. They had it. They oh, let, yeah. They let the third quarter get away from them. Yeah, they sure did. I mean, just one quarter of football they lost. They won the other three quarters. Lose the game. Uh, Dalvin Cook, it appears he will be fine. He's going to play yeah. this week, uh, and that is a big part of this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> big time. Uh, Cousins, I mean, obviously, he's got his good games and his bad games. Uh, he normally has good games against the Lions. So, I'm taking the Vikings minus 13. I get it at less than two touchdowns. Uh, give me, give me two hundred dollars on the Vikings here. I, I think, I think we talked a little bit before the game, or before the game, before the podcast about what games we liked, what games we didn't, which we don't always do. Yeah. Um, I think it's gonna be a game we're both on. Don't know if I like that anymore or not, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm taking the Broncos at the Texans. I know that the Texans made my Pats look. I don't know if they made the Pats look bad. I mean, their offense is fine, and and the Patriots defense. Look weak. Listen, the Patriots' offense finally looked fine. Okay? Yeah, they scored more than they've scored in a long, long time. That that their offense is not great. That defense for Houston gave up a lot of points to a pretty mediocre offense. And the Broncos look good with Drew Locke at quarterback right now. The Broncos look like they might have found a tricker, man. I think they've been looking for one for a long time. That offense is rolling. But here's my other thing. The only reason that Houston's offense looked the way they did was because at least 50% of the Patriots' defense had the flu. Yeah. They still played. And I'm not saying they had the flu and they weren't feeling well. The Patriots flew two private jets to Houston. Yeah. One with the healthy bunch. One they had with a the... sick bay jet <laughs> to fly Half the team. That that's not something you do when guys are, like you put a surgical mask over them. You stick them in a different part of the plane, and and you keep the medical staff back there. And you, you don't. I know these guys have funny money. I know that the, like they don't understand what real money is like. But even these guys don't just fly two private planes to a football game on the other side of the country. Yeah. I. That's how sick these guys were. Houston's not going to get the luxury of playing against defensive players that have spent the entire week just throwing up and shitting everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think the Broncos are on the rise. Now, a little bit of this is desperation <laughs> because I got a Broncos over seven wins bet. And you're just looking to push it. I point. need three more W's. <laughs> and I think they got it in them, but they got to get this one. What uh? What is your total on it? What's your your amount? We're at the end of the year. I got a the number's nine and a half. Give me a hundred bucks. Yeah, I, I got nine and a half as okay. well on the same game. I'm doing a hundred and fifty. So nine I was and really a half. Long winded. I'm just I'm still the, not impressed with this Houston. The team. Texans don't win by double digits a lot, like against anybody. I, I think there's a really good chance Broncos can win this game. I think so too. I'm just not impressed with this Houston team. Is that crazy? Well, especially Am I after just wrong. It, no, I don't think you're wrong at they all. They beat the Colts, and I wasn't impressed with that win. They just beat the Pats. I wasn't impressed with that win. I like both those two other teams well, better I mean, you, than I you still remember like them. Houston won the AFC South last year, and really, I mean, they were 0-4 to start the season, right? Yeah, they got then, hot, and they won like nine games straight, eight games but straight they, in the NFL. But it's crazy. eight of them were by one possession. Yeah, like it was, that, That's what they do. You're giving me nine and a half points. They got to win by double digits. I, I do think this Broncos team is a – is a good football team. Yeah, I think I think they're getting there. It's taken a little while. Um, we had our doubts about Vic Vangio early, he's, but he's not. I don't think they're, he's ever going to be great. I mean, they they fine. just won a game, and I understand it was the Chargers, but they did just win a game. Uh, you know, w without without Von Miller. That's right. So That's right. I'm just saying. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. So we're there. Uh, next game. Well, no, no, no. You just took one of my games. Go ahead and give me your uh, your next one. My next game was the game I thought was going to be my most public pick. I thought we just watched Seattle kick the crap out of the Vikings, who I think are really good. You think are, yeah. we are a pro Vikings football team in in this in this uh, family right here? Yes. I, I thought, man, the Rams have looked like crap. Seattle just came off a big TV win. Russell Wilson is unbelievable. I like Seattle here. But I'm scared because the public is going to be all over it. I mean, they're not. 
they're just not. I mean, it's as 50 50 as you can get right now. now That's, I was going to say, what it, it's, it's 58% over at Sportsbook Review. It's late Tuesday night. So, this, I mean, it could end up being 90% by the end of the week. But, yeah, yeah. 65 35. Yeah. I mean, so, I, it's it, still more people on Seattle. But that's not a public pick, though. And You're not moving a line for, for 60 No, but it, this thing opened up at three and it's, it's down to one. Yes. So, I, it's, a, it's a little strange. I think at the end of the day, I'm trying to not get too cute. Russell Wilson is incredible. He'll be the best player on the football team. He'll be the best player on the field. That is a at the same time as uh, uh, Donaldson, and and yeah. I, I still he's still the best player. That offense is rolling, and I think that defense is going to be able to make plenty of stops against the Rams. I just don't think the Rams are good at football. Now we saw this game a few weeks ago. And the Rams had a field goal with Greg Zerline at the end of the game to win the game. And that was more than a few weeks ago. That's a, it was like a month and a half ago. Well, he, okay. So, it was earlier in the season. Yeah. Rams lost by one. And now they are a one-point dog. You've got the Seahawks minus one. What's your, uh, what's your money? I'm 100 bucks for all these. 100 bucks on all of them. Okay. Uh, I'm going the opposite direction. Okay. I'm going with the Rams plus one at home. I, I think they got right last week. And I think Seattle, with the Monday night game, they get the win over the Vikings. They are in a pressure spot now because they, they got the number two seed. Like, they, this is, this is where the Rams can catch them, and I think that they will. I think the Rams win this game at home. Uh, I'm catching one. Give me 75 bucks on that one. Uh, next game up for me. Steelers minus three. At the Cardinals. Now, I'm only putting 50 bucks on this. But the Steelers, they play super hard. This defense looks fantastic right now. And Duck, man. Now, I didn't realize his name was Duck. But I like Duck. Duck looked pretty good last week against the Browns. And you ain't going to tell me that the Cardinals are better than the Browns. I understand that the Steelers have to go on the road here. I get that. I understand. But I like the Steelers here. I think they win by a touchdown at least, uh, and I'm only having to give up three. Like, Give me give me that all day. I think the Cardinals, if people are starting to catch up to this. Uh, Steelers have one of the best defenses in the league. Give me Steelers minus three for $50. Oh, my Rams pick was $75, by the way. Okay. Um, the public game that we talked about early, the 49ers and the Saints. I, I, I thought I was going to be unique in taking the 49ers coming off of back-to-back losses. Well, I guess it's not back-to-back losses. It's two out of three losses. Yeah. Um, going to New Orleans, and, and I thought everybody would kind of be all over New Orleans, and they're not. Everybody is on the 49ers. I like the 49ers here. I like catching points. I think they have a chance to still win this game. At the end of the day, I think they are still the more complete team than the Saints. I think the Saints are really good. I yeah. do think this is going to have a lot to do with factoring in um, home field advantage throughout number one seed, number two seed kind of kind of conversations are going to be had. And, uh, man, I d- here's what's interesting. Kyle Shanahan is not going to be caught off guard by anything Sean Payton does. He know, and, and vice versa, Sean Payton and that defense – aren't going to be caught off guard by anything Kyle Shanahan does. I mean, this is basically Falcons against yeah. the... They've played one another a long time. The difference is, is Kyle has a much better running game than he used to. And this defense for the 49ers is real. The one thing that scares me about the Saints is Drew Brees has looked old. Yes. He has looked like Father Time caught him. He can still make all the throws. He doesn't have a fastball anymore, though. No. He's not zipping in those windows and he's not getting the ball out as quick as he used to. And, I mean, if he's a half second late and against this front seven, I mean, it, it might be bye-bye for Breeze. I mean, these guys are coming. They're coming hard. They're coming fast. And they play aggressive. Yeah, I mean, I, you're I, right. Plus two and a half. It's a little scary. But he gave me 100 bucks on the 49ers. I don't like betting against the Saints in the Dome. No, especially, you it's know. not smart. And, and normally we would say West Coast team coming East Coast. For, they stayed out West the whole time. But they, but they, they stayed, stayed out, out East, east the, whole time. the whole time. They didn't yeah. go back after leaving Baltimore. Yeah. I don't know where the hell they stayed, but they. Oh, there ain't no telling. They they stayed down. 
probably somewhere down south, I'm sure. Probably. But they but they don't have to readjust. No. So that that does help your cause here. Uh I mean, we'll see. Saints defense. I don't know that I'll like it being that big of a public play. Did you but it's still that? early in the week. No, did, I, I would have would you have guessed that? I would have never guessed that. I would have thought that number would have gotten pretty close to fifty fifty, right? Yeah, I would think I was so. shocked that that was public. Uh, now, you're you're saying that, like, on Sportsbook Review, it's only 58-42. Okay, this is just Vegas. That is sports, online sportsbook. Yes. Okay. So, this is all the offshore stuff. Yeah, um, that could just be a couple of sharps. Just I mean, it's possible. On one side. Well, no, I mean, that's... No, that... At Vegas... Uh, uh, Vegas Insider, that is actually a number of bets. Like so that's, that's money. That's it's bet tickets. tickets. Yeah, you're, the money is the next one over. I thought that was so, money line. No, no, no. That's that's the amount of money that's on it. But the the public oh, that's picks. That's still high too. Uh, yeah, that's eighty twenty and it's, then eighty one nineteen. It's, equal, it's equal to the money and the better pick, number of picks. It's Whew. all right. We can get off that game. We just rambled for a long time for to tell you I, I like the same thing that everybody else in the public liked. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you learned there. My last pick, and then you'll give uh, your last one. The Ravens are going to Buffalo. They're going to New Era Field. The Bills are getting six points here. Plus six. I'm putting 100 bucks on the Bills to cover the six here. The Ravens have been through a gauntlet. I understand that they have looked fantastic. But, man, they have, they've dealt with a lot of crap here. And I think it finally catches up to them here. I, I think that the 49ers... The Bills' defense is set up a lot like the 49ers' defense. may not be as good, but they got a good front seven. they got a good secondary. They have been able to slow teams down that run the football. The Ravens love to run the football, and I think that this is just that, that spot in the schedule where you get done whipping the Rams, you, you win a close game at home in the weather against the 49ers, you know, you you beat up on the Patriots like they have been rolling. I don't know that the Bills beat win the game. You beat C- Seattle. Oh, you beat all the good teams right now. Yeah. You, you've been through a goal. NFC, AFC, it, it don't matter. Which is why I think. I, I I like your logic, and I like this pick. I don't have, I don't like it enough to give it out, but I like this pick. Bills plus six for $100 here. I, I think they... I think they keep this within a field goal. I could see them winning the ball game. Yeah, I, I could too. I could too. Just because that's the kind of stuff that happens in the NFL. Yeah, you don't go undefeated in the NFL. Sure don't. You, you sure don't. And don't. I understand they've already lost two ball games. I get that, but like, what? What is it? Seven games straight? Yeah, they haven't lost in a long time. I mean, it's just since ridiculous. That, since that uh, Chiefs game. No, no, no. It was the uh, oh the, the Browns, Browns game. game. That's right. Yeah. That's that, that's Browns game. So it's amazing. This Browns team beat the hell out of them. In yeah, Baltimore. it Isn't makes no insane? sense. I mean, that, but that's the kind of stupid stuff you get in the NFL, though, right? Yeah, that's it's ridiculous. It makes sense. Last year, the Patriots lost four games. None of those teams made the playoffs, and the Patriots won the Super Bowl, and they kind of kicked the crap out of everybody once they got in the playoffs. Yeah, That's you're right. My last pick, a bet on team I bet on all year long, lost two weeks in a row with them. I'm I'm staying in Indy. I love this Colts team. If you look at the pattern here, I bet on four road teams. I bet one favorite, and they're a one point favorite. Everybody else a dog. I just cannot believe Jameis Winston's going to win three in a row. He's going to cock a game up. What if, if the Colts lose this? You think they're done with Jacoby Brissett? I mean, they this have, is this is a team I could see drafting Tua and and letting him develop, and you keep Jacoby and well, yeah, just I mean, roll I could see them got. drafting somebody, but will that guy come in and play over Jacoby? I don't know. Not next next season. But I, I think, oh no! I, if if they draft, you know, one of these non Tua guys, yeah. sure. I mean, I mean, there's we'll gonna be a bunch of quarterbacks in this draft. So I mean, if you're picking 14, you could still get a pretty damn good quarterback. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I, here's the thing: whoever they draft, I trust because I really like this front offense a lot. I mean, front office a lot. I like this head coach a lot. I, I think that they went from kind of being a joke organization. Because their owner is a moron. They hired so, some good football people. He's hired some really good football people, and it seems like they've kind of put him in a locker and saying, "Hey, you just just spend money, keep writing the checks, and and we're gonna we're gonna run this thing, yep. and we're gonna build you a winner." I, I think they're doing that. I really trust this front office. So I, I don't know wh- who they're gonna draft. 
I bet that guy's going to be really good, though. I bet he won't be a bust. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I mean, that's that's it. I just – Jameis is going to blow a game. What, right? what is this line? Three? Three. Colts plus, Colts three, plus three at the Bucks. And this is one of those funny lines. 94% of the people on the damn Colts, the line went from minus one to minus three. Yeah, it went, went opposite of the public. Now, the money is not there. All the sharps are on Tampa Bay because you, you got 50-50 money. Yeah. 94% ticket. Yeah. I, I Look, I just don't – you trust Jameis three weeks in a row, be my guest. Let's see. Right uh, right here on Sportsbook Review, it is 51% to 49%. So it's, so it's even. It's even. It's even nationwide. It's just – you guys, obviously, when the tickets are one way, you've got a lot of sharps betting one way in Vegas. Um, I don't know that I'm going to pay attention to that. I'm going to take the team that I think is the better team. I think they've been the better team all year. And I just I just refuse to buy into this Tampa Bay team. And you know I love them. Love the head coach. Love both coordinators. I'm, I'm, I'm all in on the coaching staff. I love their offensive weapons. <laughs> I love their defensive <laughs> players that they've added. Those are my guys. I, Jameis just... I can't buy into them, man. That makes sense. They're a quarterback away from being a great football team. Yeah, not I agree good, with you. not good. And I don't know that they need elite. If you swap quarterbacks for this team and gave them Jacoby Brissett level QB under Bruce Arians all year, I'm, oh yeah, I'm in. I'm in love with Tampa Bay. <laughs> I'm in love with him. If I could but get instead, that, I'm not. I just don't trust Jameis to win three games straight. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right, so that's going to wrap up our picks. Of course, you can find our gambling picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Go click on gambling picks. Everything's right there in a nice little spreadsheet. You can see everything we've done for the last four seasons. It's pretty easy. Go check it out. Uh, coming up right now, Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter and the host of the Three Dong Thursday podcast, TJ Reeves. Every single week, he jumps in to talk NFL with us. He is TJ Reeves, the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, you were uh, you were watching this disaster of a football program last week, the Jacksonville Jaguars, as your Bucks <laughs> totally dismantled them early and held on late, right? Yeah, uh, twenty-five nothing in the first half and one twenty-eight to eleven. We'll take that win. Uh, by the way, I had the Buccaneers on your show last week on Winning Cures as an underdog. Brother yes, Giannini did. came through with the Buffalo Bills on Thanksgiving Day. I bookended it with the Buccaneers short underdog cover and easy win over the Jaguars. So back-to-back wins for the Bucks. They're looking up and. I don't know what the the Jaguars right now are swimming with Shamu. They are so far in the <laughs> tank. Uh, and they've benched Nick Foles. And much the same way of your contracts on the Winning Cures Everything podcast and YouTube simulcast, Nick Foles is owed $30 million more guaranteed by the Jaguars. Very similar to your deals. And they are putting him on the bench to go back to the rookie Gardner Minshew. What a mess in Jacksonville. And you really wonder here if Shad Khan, the owner, who's enduring another bad season two in a row, isn't going to blow the whole thing up, guys. What do you think about them going after Ron Rivera? Like, just get, get rid of Doug Maroney. That, I, mean, and... how, how, I mean, how about that? That <laughs> Rivera fired, uh, you know, he's, he's in the playoffs a couple of years ago. He's in the Super Bowl, what, three years ago? They they have uh, they've been good. Cam Newton basically has not played the entire year. The last time we saw him was Week Two when my Buccaneers beat them on Thursday Night Football. They shut him down for the season with the foot injury. So that's uh, that's amazing. On what have you done for me lately? And you have no job security if you're a pro coach in any sport. Uh, so uh, yeah, Rivera's going to be an interesting name. What you're talking about if Jacksonville blows it up, uh, and there's probably two or three other places that are going to be looking for head coaches. Uh, and, and Ron Rivera's name will probably get kicked around uh, because of that, especially if the carousel starts with the Giants making a move on Pat Shermer because they've been so bad. Who's the Redskins' full-time coach? Jason Garrett getting fired in Dallas. We, you know, we wait for the musical chairs in the NFL here in about four or five weeks. Any, anybody that needs an adult in the room, as Chris would say, uh, would be wise to go and get Ron Rivera. I'd, even Even his Browns might be smart to do that. I'll take it. Well, and does, yeah, is Freddie Kitchens one and done? Like we've theorized here, uh, is Cleveland going to be on the look? 
So you, know, you can't argue with the fact that they've had tremendous success in Carolina up and up until now. They they faltered last season and now they've really struggled this year. It looks like they're going to say goodbye to Cam Newton and get rid of his contract after this season because it it relieves about nineteen million dollars in salary cap if they do that. So they they appear ready to just start over in uh, in Carolina, which is insane. So so I want to address two things. First, uh, Revere getting getting fired today it shocked me i don't understand why he got fired today um because i don't think they're making like this isn't college and you don't get like a jump start on hiring the next guy um i and i don't have any reports on this i didn't read this it's just a gut feeling i had i think i think he went and had an honest conversation with the owner and said are we bringing me back because if you're not i'd like to leave now um and, and and I could be completely wrong on that, but I think there are other jobs that he wants to be considered for. And and if he's the first guy out, then he's the first guy that can get some interviews. And, and my and understanding, again, I, I have no insight on the reporting on this, but my understanding is the owner, the new owner, um, for Gettleman, for, it's Gettleman, correct? For the uh, the name escapes me no, the, at not, the moment. Get, Gettleman's the Giants. Gettleman is the GM of the Giants, and he may be done too. But the the new owner of the um, I, Panthers. I know, I know he's a Wall Street guy. He's strictly and analytical. and Rivera and Rivera didn't necessarily see eye to eye from the very beginning, and he has made it clear. It's Kepper, right? Has made it That's very it. clear that uh, that he wants his own guy, having taken taken over as the owner late last year from Jerry Richardson, that he wants his own guy uh, in there. But I, I don't think it's one of those where Rivera went and asked out uh, in this situation. I think you just got a, you know, you got an owner that wanted him uh, to be gone and, and believes, like you're saying, I can get a jump on it for whatever that's worth. Maybe it's a college coach that he thinks – uh, will come in and, and will make something happen uh, here. I don't know. And they're in the division. We see them twice a year. We haven't uh, we haven't seen them uh, since London. When again, uh, that's that's about the last time the Panthers won. They they were getting it done with Kyle Allen there for about two or three weeks, and now it has fallen apart with four straight losses. And they make the move. You're hired to be fired in pro sports. Well, now you might be right now, because I just didn't see in the NFL. You just don't get a jump on guys like you do in college. Because you just, it's just not as easy to go grab a contemporary's coach. What but, if he's delusional he's, enough to, I don't mean to interrupt, but what if he's delusional enough to think he can get Lincoln Riley and that maybe Lincoln Riley brings Jalen Hurts with him or brings a quarterback in there or and the make Kingsbury, Cam Newton Kyler Newton Murray thing? I mean, what is, uh, yeah. yeah. No, you might be right. I don't know. Him going after a college coach would, would give the reason of why you'd fire him now because these college coaches are starting to look for jobs. Now that, right. that does make more sense. I didn't think of that at all. My other thing is, is Cam Newton's nineteen million dollars next year is really cheap in the world of quarterbacks today. Like, I mean, I think he's like the twenty fifth highest paid quarterback at nineteen. That's a starter. I think that's a bargain. I know he's not going to be great, but he could be a stopgap guy. I mean, if you were to bring in Andy Dalton next year, you know, for a stopgap while you <laughs> you know work on a rookie, you're going to pay him close to nineteen million. I'd rather have Cam. Right. Well, we'll see what they do. This may be a complete makeover here. Demo it, blow it up, and then and then redo. We'll see what Carolina uh, does. And again, Jacksonville may be in that same boat going back to Gardner Minshew, although I, I will tell you this, watching him at field level in the second half, that team responded to him. He's got mobility. Uh, Jacksonville's offensive line, awful. They can't, they can't oh, yeah. get anything going right now, and so you need Minshew because he can get out of the way. Nick Foles couldn't get out of the way, guys. So that team's uh, not good, you know, but Gar- they do, you're right. They play different for him. Yeah, they believe in him. The whole the whole body language of everything changed with him out there. I agree. And so you got the Chargers coming in as a road underdog off of blowing that game at the end of the game in Denver last week. So maybe this is a spot uh, that we'll we'll talk about it on Three Dog Thursday. But I've gone to Jacksonville so many times and been wrong <laughs> on your show. It's like burn me five times. Uh, you know, buy me a fire suit for Christmas. I don't know. I can't go back to the Jaguars. <laughs> so so I will tell you this. Gary and I, growing up, kids of the 90s, loving wrestling, uh, we like to call this, I believe this game is a loser-leave-town match. <laughs> you, you think that they might be blowing stuff up in Jacksonville. Now, if Anthony Lynn loses this job, he doesn't make it back to L.A. Yeah. 
They leave him. They leave him in North Florida, possibly. Yeah. And, and remember, they the were Evans. a pl- well. Here we go again. They they were a playoff team a year ago, the LA Chargers, and won in Baltimore against uh, Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens to get to the next round of the playoffs. So it's the NFL. It's the pros. Remember that the Titans two years ago won a road playoff game at Kansas City got beat the following week by the Patriots and then fired Mike Malarkey anyway yeah. in Nashville so welcome to the NFL yeah the uh, the Chargers were my Super Bowl pick for this season so needless yeah. to say that's not going well that's not going well uh <laughs> let's talk about a couple of games this week uh that might be on the topic of conversation for three dog Thursday uh, which, remember, you can always go and get that podcast anywhere that you get your podcast, Apple Podcasts, etc. Leave him a review, subscribe to it, tell him we sent you. He will appreciate it. Let's, uh, let's talk about the big game early and then the afternoon game. So the early game, again, this is a regional game. I don't know why they keep doing this, but the 49ers catching two and a half at the Saints. This seems like it should be a national game. And it's only going out to a segment of the public. Uh, you got any feelings on this one? Well, oh, this is this is a very interesting game here with the Saints having the extra time to prepare after they whipped up on the Atlanta Falcons and clinched the NFC South. Obviously, the top seed is still alive uh, for the New Orleans Saints now playing at home. And this game has important tiebreaker implications here with 49ers against the Saints for that reason as well. Uh, and fascinating that the Seahawks, to back up a step, win on Monday night, and they are now in the two spot on the tiebreaker with San Francisco as the potential NFC West champions. And San Francisco went from being nine and one uh, to, to now uh, to now being the five seed uh, at the moment. And so this is another large game for them because they don't want to fall further behind in the division and have to be on the road to start the playoffs potentially after getting off of that nine and one start. So. Uh, I like Eagles the 49ers the and yeah, well, right. And I, I like the, I like the 49ers here uh, in this spot. I know they're, they're uh, back-to-back road games. I know they stayed in the Eastern time zone again. They've typically done this over the last decade or so, believing in this. So they, they played in Baltimore. They stayed in the Eastern time zone to now play against the saints coming off of Thanksgiving weekend. And I think San Francisco in the controlled environment there in the dome, it will be loud Bad weather there last week, but they still played valiantly in that game at, at Baltimore. Lamar Jackson just made a couple of more plays, and they got the last second field goal in the awful conditions uh, to win it. I, I will take a strong look at 49ers against the Saints here in this matchup. Kyle Shanahan playing a lot of his uh, career in Atlanta coaching. Uh, he, he knows Sean Payton well. Uh, you he he won't right. be caught off guard with this team. Not at all. And then the afternoon game on CBS – you got the Kansas City Chiefs, a three-point dog, at Chris's New England Patriots. Uh, you, you got any inklings for maybe an underdog upset here? Wow. AFC Championship game rematch from the overtime heart attack win by New England to get into the Super Bowl. The Patriots, uh, again, watching that Sunday night game last week, do they miss Gronkowski? Do they miss any kind of a deep threat to open up that offense? I think 100% Y-E-S exclamation point. Uh, <laughs> so we, I don't know that that gets cured here in this situation. Now, Kansas City's defense is maybe not what we have seen against uh, Baltimore or when they played Houston there the other night, although they did make a good comeback late in the game, making some plays uh, against the Texans. Uh, I, I like New England at home. Yes, Kansas City getting points on the road. I like New England here at, at home. But, Chris, I know you're the Patriot guy, and you've been talking about it already on the show here. You, you really wonder because now, uh, did I see the scenario that if New England loses this game and Buffalo wins, wins out here, that Buffalo is now in position to win the AFC East and make the Patriots a road playoff team on the opening weekend of the playoffs? That, that Buffalo would control their own destiny. How crazy is that? This this is the first time in a long time that the Patriots have a chance of not winning their division. That would require Buffalo winning uh, against ba- ba- Baltimore right now. No, well, and against they also Baltimore, have to win. They've not they, they've not played the Patriots in New England. Am I correct? That's what I was they about to say. They win win in New they'd England. have to win at Gillette. 
So, so wow. they'd have to beat Baltimore at home this week and win. Okay, so let's talk about the things that will more than likely happen that, as, opposed to Balt- as opposed to Buffalo beating Baltimore and beating New England at New England. How about winning the Powerball and being struck by <laughs> lightning in the same afternoon? That's, uh, how about uh, Brother Giannini ending up, uh, let's say, getting a golf foursome with Donald Trump Michael Jordan and and pick one maybe Tom Brady in his golf foursome that might be more likely than Buffalo, than Buffalo you, winning. You act again. like that hadn't already happened. I was about to say. Oh, well, we maybe it has we happened. The we power broker have meeting. Jay, I got some stories to tell you. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we, that's another podcast for another time on the uh, on the golf foursome. Uh, it's like it's like Seeger's getting the chance to jam with the Rolling Stones. You're a rock and roll guy. Yeah. It would be more likely that you were to win the lottery and jam with the Rolling Stones on the same night. Than Buffalo, I, I'm just putting it out there. Than oh, yeah. Buffalo beating Baltimore and New England at New England before so, the years. So over. I'm going to tell you what makes me afraid of this right now is I, be, I okay. believe in the in the KOD, the kiss of death, and I feel Uh-oh. like you just I think you just put that on me. How do I have that power? I don't know. Uh, the kiss I don't know. Of death. But every time I'm with somebody and they say, "Oh, that's guaranteed not going to happen," and they bet one way. <laughs> I immediately go put money down the it's other way. It's kind of like in the and Michigan, laugh, I laugh and laugh and I, laugh. I, hey, I laughed out loud in the Michigan-Ohio State game because right off the bat, Michigan got a touchdown, and Gus Johnson says, this kicker is the best kicker right now in college football as he's yanking the extra point 30 oh, yeah. feet wide left. And I went, there it is. There's the announcer jinx, the kiss right. of death, the kiss what of you're death. talking about. But I, I don't think I'm the kiss of death on the not. Patriots here. I, I might be not. on the Buffalo Bills. I hope, I hope you're right on that. So. <laughs> All right, so that is uh, that's going to wrap up the uh, the segment for now. Of course, go find TJ on the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Uh, you can listen to him on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers radio uh, network. Yep. It, is that the right way to say it? The Buccaneers, radio network? It, Buccaneers, Indianapolis Colts Sunday. Bucks looking to win three in a row and could greatly damage the Colts' hopes to get in the AFC wild card oh, yes. picture because the Colts have lost three of four. I know. And. Uh, yeah, they, they and they took it on the chin at home from Tennessee. They're trying to chase down Houston, who they've lost to uh, now in both games. So it's not going to be easy for the Colts. I would love to have another winning locker room to do the postgame locker room show, and that would be great <laughs> for three in a row. We'll see what happens. And, Gary Seegers, I'm looking forward to your underdogs on Three Dog Thursday with me, brother. I got a few of them. Hey, I got how, a few. How was my boy Devin White the other night? Fantastic. <laughs> how about that? Uh, the, the rookie linebacker from LSU, fantastic coming into his own Buccaneer defense, looking good. 11 sacks and six turnovers in the last two games. And Devin White's a big part of that. Let's hope it continues, uh, boys. Be well. Absolutely. Three Dog Thursday podcast. Go review it. Go subscribe to it. TJ, we will see you again next week. Viva la underdogs. All right. We appreciate TJ being in here with us. He's always a good time. You can follow him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. Go make sure that you subscribe to the Three Dog Thursday podcast. comes out once a week. It is fantastic listening. I think you will enjoy it. So go check it out. Three Dog Thursday. You can find them on Twitter, at Buck Sideline Guy, or at Three Dog Thursday. Uh, easy enough, right? That's right. Of course, winningcureseverything.com, tunicatravel.com, smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN for a 20% deposit there. We've told you everything you need to know. Go make sure you enter the picks contest. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. Hit the like button. Make sure you leave us a comment. Tell us what your picks are for this week. We would love to hear them. And we are getting back to 500. We are going to get there. So, we appreciate all you for hanging around. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure you subscribe. We'll see you all again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.